we're back here on the Pidercraft Season 3 server. And as normal, we still have a gold sword issue. But we'll we'll make a gold sword non-stackable item filter eventually, right? I, I know I keep saying it at the start of every episode, but we'll, we'll do it eventually, right? Right? <laughs> so hello humans, I'm the Alien Doctor, but you could call me Alien. And welcome back to another episode of Pinecraft Season 3. First things first, I want to take a look at this shulker box. And yeah, just as I thought, as you can see here, we have quite a lot of honeycomb from our bee farm this thing has been producing lots and lots of honeycomb and eventually i'll switch it out to use bottles and then we can get some honey bottles instead but for now i think i'm gonna stick to using honeycomb one thing i do want to check is the durability of the shears and as you can see right here pretty much all the shears have really good durability which is pretty good but anyway, enough about that. We need to get on with something. So what's the first thing that we need to do in today's episode? You see, I want to build a carrot farm. And I want to do this for two reasons. Number one, we have a pretty good source of gold now. So we can actually go ahead and craft ourselves golden carrots using all the gold nuggets that we get from the gold farm. So the second option is actually to do with villagers. So over here, we have some farmer villagers and we can actually trade carrots for emeralds. Now, I actually had to double check this because as you can see here, both of these villagers do not actually have that trade. That's because I just haven't rolled them with that trade. However, if we open up the actual uh, fandom wiki thingy bob, then you can see here that on Bedrock Edition, we do actually have a trade that's carrot for emeralds. So we're just going to need to roll a villager that has this trade because for some reason, I didn't roll it when I was originally setting up this trading hall. And of course, carrot farms are going to require us some villagers if we want to do this the proper way which we certainly do so i think step one is to go ahead and get ourselves some villagers oh dear but before we do that i do just want to show you something so toad and panape actually got together and uh, got me a birthday present so i have two of these shulker boxes full of diamonds and gold and lodestone and even ancient debris and pig step and other side which is actually really cool i don't even think i had pig step on the side yeah i don't think i do so that's pretty awesome so thanks guys <laughs> not only this but somewhere in this direction they actually built a huge statue of me <laughs> there it is i could just see it coming into view now and they actually filled the inside of my head with cake as well <laughs> so we have a whole lot of cake there and i'm pretty sure we have some cake down here as well which i have eaten but yeah, so thank you, Toad and Penape. You should go check out their channels as well. I've linked them in the description, as I always do. This is like a void room. That's weird. But anyway, <laughs> we're getting distracted. But I do just want to say thank you both for my birthday present. I don't know why, but apparently I am the only person whose birthday gets celebrated on Pinecraft. I'm not quite sure why that is, but there you go. So anyway, back to the matter at hand. We need to get ourselves some villagers over and up to this place. Now, I can see a village over here. But the question is, does it have any villagers in it? You, sir, can be villager number one. And you can be villager number two. Now, the other thing is, aha, there is a farm over here, which has some carrots in. So I'm going to use my fortune pickaxe to get as many of those as possible. Wonderful. So here we have Kyle <laughs> and Brian. <laughs> and we're going to be transporting these two villagers all the way over there to our industrial district. I'm sure absolutely nothing could go wrong here. All right, come with me, chaps. We're going to go on a nice journey through the mangrove swamp. Totally nothing to be worried about. Yes, everything will be fine. Whoa, no, careful, careful. Ooh. Maybe we should get some water just in case. <laughs> feel like some water would be a good idea here. Don't worry, this is going to be a, a nice journey. It shouldn't take too long. And uh, thank you for choosing the Alien Express for your journey today. You're in good care. Well, this is actually going a lot smoother than I expected. Can't lie, can't lie. Yep, go on, get up the hill. Come on. <laughs> Not good all day. Now, what is my plan for actually getting them up there? Uh, I have a couple of ideas. The first one is using that bubble elevator. I'm not sure how well that would work, though. Hmm. Okay, it's good to see that Brian and Kyle are still alive, so I think it's probably a good idea to go one at a time here. Okay, 
try not to suffocate in any blocks, please. Thank you. Okay. 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 Nope. <laughs> yep. Okay. Uh-huh. Yes. Yes. No, no. Okay. 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 No, 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 no. So I may have derped a little bit <laughs> and forgot to press start recording. But we've already got Brian up there, so now we've just got to do the same thing for Kyle. And it's a pretty easy process, so I'm hoping it won't take too long. It was surprisingly straightforward. So, step one is to get you over here so that you can go up those stairs, please. Okay, and if you could just whoa, try not to bang your head on anything, because that would not be ideal. Nope, that isn't ideal. Please don't do that again. Thank you. <laughs> oh, congratulations, you've grown up. <laughs> You are now adult villager. How do you feel? Okay, wonderful. You're on the loading platform. Ready to be loaded. Okay, now we break your boat. And you are going to try and run away for whatever reason. Not 100% sure why. Because there's nothing to be afraid of. This is a perfectly safe experience. And you're going to go up there. In a second. <laughs> Hopefully. There we go. And then I just need to go with him. Have the boat ready. Don't fall. Okay. I'm really worried about your health. Whoa. Oh, no. Oh, no. Uh, I don't know what to do. No. No, 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 this is terrible. Uh, this is, like, really bad. Okay, so now that we have this uh, platform thingy built up, we need to go and save Brian. Or Kyle. Who, who's stuck? I think it's Kyle that's stuck up here. So what we need to do is get in the boat with him. Now, that might cause one of us to start suffocating in here. I'm not sure. But all we got to do is land in there. How hard can it be? Okay. Uh, this isn't easy. And I am pressing the S key. Okay, the, the paddles are moving, but I'm not sure if I'm actually reversing, which isn't ideal. Uh, oh, I can't move at all. Oh. Um, okay, well, this could go pretty terribly. <laughs> I can't lie, but let's just... Is he gonna... Okay, uh, let's just break the boat. Oh, please, 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 please. Okay, thank you. Oh, okay. I can breathe now. <laughs> Oh, jeez. How? Why did that even happen? <laughs> so now that that's out of the way, it's time to build up the farm itself. However, we have one minor issue. <laughs> we haven't actually got a design for this yet. If you don't know me, I like to try and design stuff myself. So I think we need to head to the creative testing world and design ourselves a farm. So because I am definitely a professional at everything. Mm, yes, definitely. I... <laughs> Kind of messed up on the recording, so the bits that recorded okay for me to... Whoa. Okay, that was weird. The game just broke, but I think it's fixed again. Anyway, as I was saying, so... <laughs> the bits that I did record of me designing this farm were very, very long, as they always tend to be, because I tend to ramble, and then some of them just, like, didn't record with audio, or the audio is broken or whatever. There was audio issues, basically. There's always audio issues. So I'm just going to have to explain to you what I did. And honestly, it will probably be quicker doing it this way anyway. So this is the farm that we designed, as you can see. We then have villager number one, who is a farmer. And villager number two, who is whatever you want him to be. You could also trade with him as well if we remove this block and add a slab here. As demonstrated. Villager number one, who is a farmer, will harvest all of the carrots laid out in his field. He will then try to drop these carrots over to villager number two, but villager number two will fail miserably at catching those carrots because there is a fence post and a hopper minecart in the way. You see, when you go to actually drop an item next to a fence post, the fence post will make it go straight down. Not only that, but hopper minecarts can of course pick items that are a block above them, so pretty much as soon as you drop the carrot, the hopper minecart will pick it up where it will go into this chest and not into this villager's inventory. As you can see there, we have 64 and 46. We're going to do that again. And we now have 64 and 47. Now you might be saying, But Alien, 
Why would villager number one want to throw food to villager number two? Well, there are two reasons why. First of all, in this village, there is actually three beds. And I don't know how good your math skills are, but that is exactly one more bed than we have villagers. Now, in Bedrock Edition, when there are more beds than there are villagers, the villagers will try to breed so that there is the same amount as villagers as there is beds. So, these villagers will try to breed until there are three villagers. Of course, we're going to stop them from trying to breed because, well, we want the carrots that they're throwing to each other. Now, the other reason they may want to throw food at each other, or more specifically, Villager 1 wants to throw food at Villager 2, is because there is also a mechanic where if a villager does not have that much food in its inventory, then the other villager, or just another villager, will try to give it some food. So, in this scenario, this villager should have a completely empty inventory, so Villager number 1 will try to, well, give Villager number 2 some food to have in its inventory, although it will fail miserably. And that is exactly how villager carrot farming works. So as I say, I did design this myself and stuff, but thanks to weird recording issues that I ran into, uh, yeah, I couldn't really use any of those clips very well. <laughs> so yeah, that, that's, that's the best that you're gonna get, I'm afraid. However, before we build it on the server, it's that time of the week again. Me and Penape are going to do another live stream and we are going to work some more on the base. So let's show you the time lapse. So there we have it. The next stage of the base is very nearly done now. We just need to complete this building that's going to be on top of the uh, boat type of thing here. And then the next stage of the base will be complete. And of course, if you don't know, once we've completed the next stage of the base, we'll be able to start adding in some technical things into this place. We're going to have a storage system up here in the balloon. And, and then down here, we'll also have a furnace super smelter system thingamadoodah, because then we can smelt many, many items very quickly. I think this top bit may also need finishing as well. And I know for a fact that there's also the... Uh, thingy-ba-doo-da at the back that also needs building as well. So this stage of the base is not done yet, but we have certainly got the main bulk of it out of the way now. So I'm just going to fly down here so that you can get a little bit of a better look at the aesthetic. So there it is. That's the base. <laughs> In other good news, I finally have the vanilla cape, which I've just noticed in Bedrock Edition is actually called One Vanilla, which is kind of weird. So switching back to the main focus of today's episode, we need to work on the carrot farm. So I've gone ahead and filled in this little chunk, which is going to be where we're going to put the carrot farm itself. So it's the time to actually get one of the villagers in the farm. So we're going to start off with Kyle, who I've decided is going to be our farmer. So my plan is to use his pathfinding. So hopefully he's just going to try and run to the workstation, please. Oh, this is terrible. So, okay, somebody is ringing the door IRL. One moment. One package collected later. I log back on and uh, <laughs> the chunk is gone. Wonderful. Uh, we'll just wait for this to load, I guess. Bedrock's weird these days when you're loading into a server or a world. Because things like this happen. Anyway, the good news is, is that Kyle has ran to the workstation. So I'm hoping that we can just do this. And eventually we'll get him to pathfind all the way into the farm itself. When it gets night, we can do the same thing, but with beds as well. Okay, go on, go up the step. <laughs> but come on, I need you to go up. It cannot be that hard. What about now? Is it easier? Huh? There we go. Okay. And in the hole, I didn't think about that. It's fine. Don't worry. Don't question it. I need you to get out and get to your workstation. Yes. Okay. He is locked in. This is good news for now. We're just going to cover that up and we're going to add in an area back here, which is where I will be putting the beds. 
Okay, so I was going to add in their beds on a little thing back here, but it occurred to me that that would be crossing this trunk border, which I really don't want, so I'm going to have to add it on the side instead, which is not particularly ideal, but I don't really have another choice. So there you go. That's why that's like that. So I headed back here to the starter base bunker thingy, and I found this sign. You have found the subterranean signs, but now there are more. And then I noticed over here there was a block missing. Although I'm pretty sure I removed that block. And it said sub to the alien doctor there as well. So for a recap, there was like a sign that we found a couple of episodes ago. I think it was that one that said sub to the alien doctor. I didn't place it. I had no idea who did. And it looks like somebody's gone around. Yeah, look at that. <laughs> Adding more sub messages. <laughs> Uh, okay, well, I don't know who this is. It wasn't me, but I mean, I'm not complaining. Oh, there's another. <laughs> I'm not complaining. I'm, you know, free free promotion. Not really, can't complain at all. <laughs> and I mean, if you haven't subbed to the alien doctor, I don't know what you're doing. You should go sub to me right now. Just, just saying. Wow, watching this video and not subscribing. Wow, SMH. So I think my method of emptying their inventory is to just hoe all of this land and let them plant all of the food that they may or may not have on them in here. I've also put three beds because if they do have enough food to breed, then we might as well just use the villager that they bred because, well, that would mean we know it has an empty inventory. So you guys can go ahead and farm on this land as much as your hearts desire, my friends. I've left them for a little bit of time. Not too long, admittedly. I should probably... Ah! As I was saying, not too long. I should probably leave them for a little bit longer, to be honest. Oh my goodness. So anyway, as I was saying, I'm pretty sure these guys do have empty inventories. I haven't left them for tons of time, admittedly. However, by now they probably would have started planting stuff if they had anything in their inventory. So I think we're just going to assume that these guys don't have any food on them. I guess we could always swap out these villagers if it turns out later they do have food on them. For now though, we're just going to leave it like this. So one of you has got to go in there. So let's see, who's it going to be? It'll be you, Kyle. All right, this is not going to be very fun. Not going to lie. So I think step one is to get Brian over here into the boat. And it also just occurred to me we should put a glass of block on top of his workstation to stop anything from spawning. And now we need to get Kyle into that spot here. And actually, it's pretty easy to do that because we can just give him his workstation. Okay, so there we go. Brian, or sorry, this is Kyle, is running over. Nice and simple. I forgot to grab a fence. This was not very thought out plan, was it? Oh dear. Excuse me, sir, I need to put a fence behind you. There we go. Fence has successfully been installed. Although, didn't we have... Did we have these gaps here? I feel like we didn't have the gaps there. Yeah, look, it connects to blocks, but it doesn't connect to glass. Okay. Well, in that case, we'll just have to do a little bit of that. <laughs> there we go. Problem solved. Okay, so there we go. Kyle should now be in place. All we really need to do is waterlog him so he never unlinks from the bed, which is a pretty quick job. And then we're just going to chuck that in there. Awesome. And now he should never link from his bed, which I don't even know which one it is. So we're going to relink. Wonderful. So these guys now should all be linked. So what we can do is go ahead and break your boat. My good sir, you are free. Kind of. You're, you're still inside the farm, but you're sort of free. So these are all the carrots that I could find and also the ones that we obviously got from the village over there, which to be honest is already a pretty decent amount. So if we just go ahead and plant these things down, hopefully we will begin to actually get some, uh, well, carrots farmed, obviously once these things grow up. So it could be a good idea to cure Kyle, like, you know, zombify him and then cure him so that we could get one carrot uh, emerald. However, to be honest, most of the time we'll be using the carrots for crafting golden carrots anyway. So I don't think there's much point in actually curing him when we're not going to trade with him that often anyway. So I guess this farm is literally finished. It really didn't take that long to build at all. I'm going to remove... Oh, wait, no, we want a roof because of lightning. I didn't think about that. Okay, so now I'm going to go ahead and add a quick roof because it just occurred to me that lightning strikes are very much a thing to turn your villages into witches, which we do not really want. So <laughs> we're just going to add a roof here. So I've been just stood here a little while doing other stuff on the computer and... The good news is, is that it has been working actually surprisingly well. We already have 43 carrots, 
it's probably been about half an hour, maybe a bit longer than that. So really, this isn't bad at all, all things considered. If I had to guess, it would maybe give us just over a stack an hour. The main uh, bottleneck here is just the carrots growing, to be honest, by the looks of things. But yeah, th this farm certainly seems to be working. It's a shame there isn't any proper way to check if this villager has any items in its inventory, though. I'm pretty sure there is a way using something like our bedrock, but I haven't really had the time to learn that yet. So for now, we'll just have to assume that that guy has nothing in his inventory. So it's been like literally hours at this point and alien bot has just been over here afk at the witch farm getting us plenty of witch drops and uh you weren't holding a looting three sword were you no no i was not okay well that would explain why there is <laughs> not tons of drops but it's okay don't, you don't need to worry about it it's fine I, we need to get you a looting three sword alien but i think that would help quite a lot okay thank you anyway so yeah there's that <laughs> However, more importantly, he should have been loading the carrot farm at the same time. So I want to see, do we have any more items in here? Now, I'll give you a clue. I have actually already opened this chest and it is very good news, in fact. There we go. As you can see, we actually have some items. So I would say that my uh, thought earlier, my guess of the rates of being just over a stack an hour are probably correct, which is good honestly. <laughs> like, sure, it's not the fastest farm in the world, but at the end of the day, we don't need it to be the fastest farm in the world. I more sort of want just a passive farm running whilst I'm AFK at other farms or working in the area. We're not going to need tons of carrots at the end of the day. This will last for me for a good couple of weeks after we get them all crafted into golden carrots, of course, so it's not a huge issue. Now, the other farm I want to check is something that we constructed rather recently as well, and that is the bee farm. I've gone ahead and actually bred up even more bees than what we had before because I don't know if you remember but in that episode loads of the bees accidentally died so I've gone ahead and basically probably got more bees than we had before most of them died now which is good so I'm hoping we're gonna have a lot of drops in here so let's see I think it's this one no it's uh this one wow <laughs> that's okay that is actually quite a lot of honeycomb we should probably start doing honey bottles but they're kind of more of a pain to do because of how how that works. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. <laughs> I think what we need to do is add a hopper minecart up here so that we can have the honey bottles constantly full because that's just how it works. And then we can start getting some honey bottles from this instead of honeycomb because we've got plenty of honeycomb for now at least. The other good thing is the witch farm produces glass bottles, which realistically we're not going to need. So we can always just fill up the honey farm using the glass bottles that we get from here. And uh, that's what I like to call self-sustainableness. Yes. But either way, I think I'll go ahead and actually do that in between episodes or on a live stream or something. It's not exactly a long job, is it? So other than that, thank you ever so much for watching. If you're interested in more Minecraft Bedrock Edition content like this, then do subscribe today to join the Alien Empire. I can just see loads of drops whizzing around there. But I'll see you in the next episode coming very, very soon. Thanks to my supporters. Bye.